The last week, a viewer subscriber to One Rental at a Time was kind enough to leave a comment on one of Beth's video asking for pointers and recommendations for first-time homebuyers. So if you ever wanted to have some recommendations from a top 1% agent and an investor who's done hundreds of homes, here you go. What, uh, Beth, welcome to the show. Hi there. Yeah, thank you. Good to be here yeah. for this third video today. And uh, Absolutely. We, we aim to please. So if somebody wants to make a request, we do what we can to... Leave a comment below. that. So feel free, people. If you see something you want to cover, just ask and we'll do what we can to get the answers that you're looking for. So um, somebody had asked, you know, if, if, if can you do another video for first time home buyers looking to purchase in 2023? And says, sure. Okay. So I think the first thing I would recommend, and these are not in any particular order, but prepare yourself financially. Mm. So if you're looking to buy for the first time, you need to be looking at your finances closely because- like we talked about just recently, we don't want people to be overextended, financially strapped in a bad spot where they bit off more than they can chew, can't afford the house. Take some time to uh, work with a good, a great mortgage broker or mortgage banker to learn about what you can qualify for. Somebody can give you some, now they're not financial advisors necessarily. They just look at what, um, you know, they're looking at like ratios of what you qualify for, but they can give you some guidance about, you know, what, uh, what your payment's going to be, different loan programs that you might qualify for. You know, if you qualify for VA, that's a wonderful way to get in as a first time home buyer. There's FHA, which is another one, which is very first time home buyer friendly. And this is a market where first time home buyers, I think are going to do really well, at least for the first part of 2023 is shaping up to be that. Um, much, much more favorable to a first time buyer than it ever was like this time a year ago, first time home buyers. I don't care if you were like a fifth time home buyer, if you weren't super aggressive in cash and willing to take a huge amount of risk, you were not getting a house. I didn't like that as an agent personally, you know, even as a listing agent, it's no fun. You know, it's yeah. just, yeah, this is more balanced and more, um, this is a better time for you. So I would say take heart in that first time home buyers, even though rates are higher, you're getting a lot more things in your favor and you have the ability to request things like seller concessions to get rate buy downs, you know, and rates are off their high, their peaks that they were at a little while ago, you know, we're never at the low sixes now, we were in low sevens not that long ago. So mm -hmm. um, look at things like reserves too. You want to make sure that you've got some money set aside, you know, because when you can't call the landlord, obviously, to fix the furnace, if it goes out, you got to be able to handle that. So yeah, wise, wise advice. Some reserves and look at your credit too, you know. And before you go paying things off or making moves on your credit, have it checked by a mortgage banker first so they can help advise you on things you may need to do. Sometimes you got to do credit repair and do some rapid rescoring or other things. You know, there's stuff that sometimes people need to do for that. So, yeah. um, yeah, yeah. When I when I think about first time home buyers, my message to them kind of is something you said, but I want to repeat. 2023, certainly the first half is your year. You were ignored for two years. Uh, you came in with an FHA loan and I sold, I don't know, 30 some odd homes or flips back at the beginning of this. And if it was an FHA offer, it wasn't even considered. Um, now FHA is a, a true exit. Um, so know that you're going to have more choices. Know that you have the power. Uh, yeah. If I was an FHA buyer, first time home buyer, every offer I, I got, I would go for the max seller credit of 3% and I would use it as I need it, right? Whether it's closing costs or rate buy down. Also, I think working with a mortgage professional is awesome. I would, any mortgage professional that would recommend a first time home buyer get an arm, I would run away from personally, but maybe a two, one buy down is right for you. Again, the seller can pay for that. A two, one buy down means maybe if rates are 6%, the first year's four, then it's five, then it's six. Yeah. Again, the seller pays all of that, right? So you still have a 30 right. year fixed. It's just a little easier the first year. Yeah. Make um, sure you can afford the maximum rate, you oh, know, because sure. you can't assume never, never bank on refinancing. Like I said, I've made almost every mistake, you know, and back in the, when was it? 2007, we bought the house that I'm still living in now. You know, we got one of those uh, toxic, um, oh, figurative AM option arm deals. Big it was AM. supposed to be, Ouch. It, was, it was every kind of horrible you can imagine, right? And I knew yeah. it, you know, I was a professional, but I was like, hey, I've got plan A, I got plan B, I got plan C of how I'm going to get out of this thing. Cause we knew it was not good for right. long term, but it was just a short term patch. And then all those plan A, B, and C, all that's a topic of another video, but it all got messed up and ruined and vanished. And I was stuck with this thing. 
So mm. thankfully we were one of those people that we were able to do a, um, what did they call it? A uh, loan modification, mod loan modification. We did that, but man, that was like a full-time job for about nine months and I was Oof. able to get it, but Oh nice. my gosh. It was so yeah. yeah, don't ever count on being able to refi, you know, you got to be able to know that if push comes to shove, if you can, great, you know, but like you, I want to make, I don't want anybody to feel like they might lose their house. It's a horrible, no. horrible, horrible, horrible feeling, you yeah. know, and granted, this is not 2008, you know, but um, don't put yourself in that spot. You know, I will never do that again. So no, yeah. me neither. Never again. No, no yeah. not, no, no <laughs> so no, I agree no. with you on that. Um, Next one I would say is analyze your areas. Take some time to get to learn different areas and, and narrow it down for you. Now, um, everybody tends to want to live in like the best areas, right? But you may need to go a little bit outside those areas to yeah. get your first home. You might need to be some sacrifices made. But look for things that are... So I am always looking at things with an eye for investment or appreciation or long-term um, advantages. And so if I was going to buy something in an area that maybe wasn't so great, I don't know that I would really, I would try to buy, try to buy the best house, the worst house in the best area. If you yeah. can, you know, as long as it's habitable, you know, and I kind of make the joke that like my first house, I just wanted it to kind of look like a house. I didn't really care about what it was other than it. I wanted it to look like a house. Cause I saw some look like a shed and I didn't like it, but you yeah. know, if it looks like a house and it, but it was in a good area, you know, things like quiet street, good school district, even if you don't have kids, um, good, um, net, like maybe not next to commercial and other things, you know, that, um, will give you a better exit later, you know, cause in, in a great market, you can sell all those houses that back up to the freeway or all these other things, you know, Yeah. but when the market starts to shift, those are the ones that are going to be the hardest to sell if you yeah, need the, to. I call them the yeah, but houses. Yeah, yeah. But this, yeah, but this in a great market, they sell fine in a yeah. bad market. Yeah. Buts don't work. Yeah. And if you can try to get, I would say for, for future resale value, I'd say if you can get a three bedroom, two bath minimum. Now I'm not saying that, you know, if you can't do that and you, if the only way you can buy a house is to get a two bedroom, one bath starter home. Okay. You know, but just try for the, the better yeah. exit if you can. And also yeah, it sets I, it up. Yeah. No, no good. I, what, what I was going to say is what, if I was a first time home buyer, one of the things you have to do as a couple, if it is a couple, is get your non-negotiables, right? Is non-negotiable a three-bedroom or a four? Is your non-negotiable school district? I mean, because that's what it was for Olivia and I, right? We we When we bought the place we still live in today, we bought it because of the school district. It's a smaller house than we wanted, but it was the school district. It was not in the ideal location, but it was the school district, right? That was our number one thing. Uh, one of the things I think is going to be true is inventory is going to be less than people expect. So you may not get everything you want, but you should know what your non-negotiable is. Yeah. And please have that up front. Yeah. That's a good one, really. And um, another thing too is like that can change as you start looking around. People often start looking at one type of thing and then they just, as they go look at stuff, I see it happen constantly where somebody thinks I need to be in this area. I need this type of house. I need this, this, this. And then you look around and you realize, oh, well, I could get that, but it's not going to be at a price that I want. But here's this other area where if I give this little bit here and a little bit there, I can get something that's more comfortable. It's going to evolve a little bit, but, right. um, but it that's is fair. important to identify those things that are top priorities and then which things you're going to be a little more flexible on. Um, another thing too, is that, you know, people that listen to this channel are, you know, wanting to be investors a lot, you know, one rental at a time. Your best rental is the one that you buy as an owner occupy. Your best first rental is the one that you buy and then you move out of, and that becomes a rental when you leave. And so I love that. that's where things like the three bedroom plus there's a huge difference in rent between a two bedroom and a three bedroom. Mm -hmm. The best ones are that maybe a two bedroom where there's space plus a den and you just add a little closet or just, you can go, even go to Ikea and get these little closet pieces of furniture. Mm -hmm. I've literally screwed it to the wall and like bedroom, you know. Yeah, bedroom. <laughs> here's a <your> door. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, here's a spot where we can, it has a sink and we can plumb a toilet here. You know, like, you know, there's yeah. ways you can add, you know, if there's sometimes you can modify it a little bit, but, and if you can find a way to get like something that's uh, amenable to house hacking, 
you know, like I like split levels for that reason, because they often have a bedroom and a bath on that lower level and an own entrance and somebody can just live down there, you know, just put a little wet bar in that family room area that's down there and boom. So finding something that, you know, that you can house hack or that would make a good rental when you leave is going to be really good if your goal is to be an investor because then you can just kind of leapfrog from your first house and you can buy owner occupied again at the next house. And I know many investors who, who started, and that's how I started. You just kind of, you don't sell the one that you're in and you just keep moving. That's a great yeah. way to gain a portfolio over time. Yeah. I've, I've actually, a lot of people reached out to me over the years, typically in the military says, Hey, I get a house everywhere. My duty, I guess they call it a duty station is, I think that's a genius. Yeah. Have an eye for the exit. I think is very wise advice. Um, yeah, and if you're buying something that's so oddball, it's going to be hard to ever find an exit or hard to rent. I don't know if that's going to be the best one. You know, if that's literally the only way you can get on the property ladder, then maybe it could be an exception, but it's never a first choice. You know, that's always just a last last choice, yeah. I think. So Yeah, and kind of my final thought for first-time home buyers is I want to wish you luck. Um it's it buying a home can be stressful, certainly as a first-time home buyer. Uh, I want you to realize that owning assets like homes uh, is a cheat code to wealth, right? You can just look at the statistics. Homeowners have a net worth that is 30x renters. Um, you yeah, I was just the- looking at that. It was 6,300 for renters and 255,000 for owners. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. It's just so obvious, right? But realize this is a long term commitment. This is not, you're not buying a pair of shoes, you're not buying a car. This is a home. The average person stays there eight years. Um, wealth comes slowly. Mortgage pay down, all these other things. But yeah, it is worth it. Um, yeah. it, it is worth it would be my kind of closing thoughts. Any any mm-hmm. closing thoughts, Beth? Yeah. So what I would say, another thing to think about, you know, just in closing is um, be realistic about the responsibilities you're bringing on too. you know, like yeah. be ready to weather some ups and downs. Yeah, including water heaters market break. ups and downs, you know, like you got to be willing to ride things out and, you know, you got to be, you're going to have to make sacrifices too. Like, I don't know anybody who's done this without sacrifice, always a sacrifice, but I've never met anybody yet that has regretted it. So yeah. just getting out there and getting that first home, I think it's going to be a life-changing event for, for people. And yeah. again, you know, I always have to say, because I see the comments and stuff too, it's like, I'm not telling any specific person whether they should buy or not. That's not my role no. here. But no. if somebody is looking to buy, I think if they follow some of these tips, it'll definitely put, set them off on the right foot into 2023. There you go. Well, yeah. if somebody was looking to buy or maybe sell a home in King County, how would they reach out or follow you? Yeah. So my website, bethtraversogroup.com or on Facebook. I am in the One Rail at a Time Facebook group. So, and also just the regular Facebook, feel free to reach out. There you go, Beth. Thank you so much. Thank you.